Before I get started with today's vlog, I just want to say if you want to see me live and in person, I am in Las Vegas tonight, Thursday, February 7, 2019. I am at the LA Comedy Club inside the Stratosphere Hotel headlining the 10 o'clock show. Tomorrow, February 8th, 2019, I am at Hooters, the Hilarious 7 show at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, February 9th, 2019, I will be performing at the Alexis Park 930 show. That one's Comics Battle. If you guys want to be at any of those shows, please let me know. Send me a message and I will get you and whoever you're with on my list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy today's vlog. What's up everybody, Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Um, I gave my hair a blowout last night and then I went to the gym today so it's big and it's not done yet. And no matter what I say, some of you are gonna judge anyway, so let's just jump to it. First off, let me say, who knew that Virginia has such a racist history? Racist and sexist? I never would have thought it of Virginia. And you know what? I worked in Virginia. Even recently I worked in Virginia doing stand-up, of course, and it was so great. And I know that a lot of the citizens are trying to change and change the perception of what Virginia was. But the fact of the matter is that's the history of certain states in our union. And that's what it is. Do I stand by it? Do I agree with it? No. Do I think it needs to change? Most definitely. So what happened was the governor, Ralph Northam, I'm sure you guys all know by now, a photo ended up get, coming up of him in his yearbook from 1984 or 1986. I can't remember which it was. It was either 84 or 86. Anyway, he's in blackface and he's next to a uh, Klansman. Uh, you know, somebody is dressed as a Klansman, which I'm, and when I say blackface, I mean blackface, blackface. I don't mean like Kim Kardashian doing a Leah's makeup type of uh, blackface. I mean, because I didn't even consider that blackface. I was just like good bronzer. But this was actual blackface. And I don't mean like Mary Poppins blackface, because that wasn't actually blackface. That was actually soot that was supposed to be from a chimney and makes perfect sense and wasn't blackface at all. So let's keep blackface, blackface. When I say blackface, I mean along the lines of that Gucci sweater, which I don't know what Gucci was thinking, their baklava sweater, if you guys haven't heard of it. It does look like blackface and it's even got the red lips the way they used to do it for blackface. Ugh. I don't know how Gucci thought that was a good idea. But anyway, we're getting off topic. What I was talking about was what happened is Ralph Northam, the governor governor of Virginia, ended up getting in trouble because pictures got exposed from him in 1984 or 1986 in blackface next to a Klansman. So that became a thing. And then everybody was like, okay, well then things would fall to the lieutenant governor. Because the thing was with Ralph Northam, they couldn't impeach him, but everybody was calling for him to step down. And so far he's refused to step down because he wants a chance to prove his innocence. But the thing is, there's no innocence to be proven. Just take your L. You've gone away with being who you are for long enough. And there's nothing like wrong with you correcting yourself, correcting your behavior, correcting your thinking, and not being the governor. It's just that the state doesn't want to be represented by you anymore. And that's perfectly acceptable just for the state to be like, hey, we don't think you're in our best interest. We don't think that you're what we want to put out there as our representative slice if we're talking in bacon terms, which I love bacon. But again, besides the point, if you say like, you know, okay, you're not the person for us, please step down. But then he refuses to step down because he wants to defend his name. And like I said, nothing to do there. So then people are like, all right, well then it would go to the Lieutenant Governor, who the Lieutenant Governor in Virginia is a man named Justin E. Fairfax. Justin E. Fairfax is a black man. And so people thought like this will be a good remedy, you know, since technically that's where it's supposed to go next. Well, then that's where it'll go next. But then it got brought out that there were some allegations of sexual assault against Justin Fairfax, which go back several years, except for at the time that a newspaper was going to do a story about it, they couldn't corroborate everything. And the allegations are by a Dr. Vanessa Tyson, which a lot of lawmakers, legislators, senators have said that it seems credible. Like, even though um, it might, might have taken a few years, which I don't really subscribe when it comes to se sexual assault to the like it's been several years 
So now the woman decides to step forward and I don't know why she didn't step forward back then because people didn't take those allegations seriously back then. So when women come forward now, I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't think there's anything wrong with women in this climate being like, I feel like this is a safe space. Now that's not the case with this particular lady. It's just, and I've discussed this before too, a lot of times when you first bring something up like this, people will act like it's not a big deal. People will act like you're just making a big deal of nothing. So then years pass by and people are willing to take you seriously and you're like, well, yeah, I still wanna tell my story. So this Dr. Ben Vanessa Tyson, I still haven't read, well, I read part of what it was he forced her, uh, allegedly forced her to give him oral sex, which could very well be a thing. I don't know. I can't say that I had heard of Justin E. Fairfax before all this went on. So now he's not looking like he's going to be the best to take over the governorship in Virginia. So then it would be Attorney General Mark R. Herring, that's where it would go. That would be the next person in line. And Mark R. Herring got ahead of it and was like, hmm, just so everybody knows, I've done blackface. I'm gonna let you know, I've done blackface. But the Black Caucus was actually very impressed because what Mark R. Herring did was he went ahead and got on the phone with each member of the Black Caucus individually and apologized and sounded very sincere and contrite. So if you're very sincere in your apology and the Black Caucus is good enough for them, then it's good enough for me. I'm not there for the apology and I'm not one of those people that thinks, well, if I haven't heard it, there is an apology. It wouldn't be an apology to me anyway. I'm Mexican American and I'm not in Virginia and I'm not close to the situation. So for me, I don't feel that I have to hear the apology. If it's good enough for the Black Caucus, it's good enough for me. So then there was a situation on the Republican side where um, Thomas K. Normant is now in trouble because he helped oversee uh, the a yearbook for the Virginia Military Institute was what it was called and it was called the bomb and it see this one is where it kind of falls apart for me because this guy uh, Thomas K. Normant says that you know it's just like Democrats wanting to bring in a Republican and be like, you know, because the others are Democrats, this guy's a Republican. And so he's like, is this is Democrats wanting to bring in a Republican and say, look, they do it too. And it does kind of come off that way because this is a different situation, in my opinion, in that this guy was helping to oversee a yearbook for the Virginia Military Institute called The Bomb. That was the name of the yearbook. And he was one of seven people that was overseeing the yearbook. He was yearbook committee, not to be rude, but usually it's nerds on the yearbook committee. Sorry, nerds. But in the yearbook, there's slurs against African-Americans, Asians, and Jewish people. So this one I'm kind of torn on. I don't condone his behavior, but at the same time, he's 70, 72 years old and the yearbook for, was from 1968. So. Things were quite a bit different in 1968. I'm gonna have to say that even though that one seems different to me, again, I'm gonna have to defer to the black community. If black people feel like they don't, you know, I change my mind on all of this. Just shake the goddamn sheet and get rid of all of those crumbs. That's the way I feel about it, if we're gonna be honest. You know, we need to reshape the way this country works when it comes to that. And it's been a lot of old racist white people running a lot of stuff for a long time. And I'm sorry if you're an old racist white person right now watching this, getting upset and thinking that I have a lot of nerve being brown and gay and trying to say what it is you should be doing in this country. But really, I'm indigenous. So this is my people's land anyway. And I feel free to say whatever I want to say. And I really do feel like in places like Virginia, we got to shake the sheet get rid of those crumbs and get some new people in there that actually represent what it is we need represented in this country. That's the way I feel about it. And Lieutenant Governor Justin E. Fairfax, I'm gonna go ahead and reserve judgment at least for a minute on you and give you the benefit of the doubt for a minute longer. But really, I feel like you might be one of the crumbs that needs to be shaken too. And you guys can let me know what you think. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Mm -hmm.